It's been 24 hours and our leaven is showing great signs of activity, which means that we can mix our bulk, which is the next step. Let's see if I can do this one handed. There we go. I'll just reveal it that way. So lots of obvious bubbles on the surface and the texture has changed quite a lot. If I shake that, it's no longer stiff dough. It's it's jiggly, a little jello-y now. And that just tells us that there's a lot of air in the in the dough, in the leaven. And we can float test this by doing the same thing that we did with the float testing the starter by taking a scoop of the leaven, dropping it into water, and there should be enough air in the dough to allow the leaven, the piece of the leaven to float. And if it does, it's passed the float test, which just means it's got adequate activity to be mixed into a bulk fermentation. If your leaven doesn't float, save yourself some time. Don't advance to the next steps. Uh, you're, you're just gonna end up failing with a lot more work invested and it's gonna be much more tragic. You really need to master those first two steps of having a really active starter and then a very active leaven before you're going to have success in baking actual bread with it. So go back to step one, start out from mixing your, uh, feeding your starter, feeding the leaven, and then if the leaven floats, we can move on to the next step. We're going to use our full leaven, so we'll scrape that into whatever dish we're going to be mixing our bulk in. Here we're adding about 20 ounces of water. We're also going to add one scoop of sea salt and then we're going to add a heaping pyrex which is over a liter of flour we're then going to mix it with the spatula at first and then by hand and now in this stage we're actually developing strength in the dough the more we work it and mix it in this stage the easier it's going to be to shape these into loaves of bread or loaves that are going to become bread later on so we want to really work it in this step. Cleaning up is actually a bit more complicated than you might think. This stuff is basically glue, so be considerate of that when you're washing up. Like if you try to scrub your cast iron with one of these sponges, the sponge will actually be pretty ruined at the end of it. The uh, flour gets into all those little pores and hardens and then your sponge is pretty much useless for cleaning up. I find it's actually a lot easier to use a cloth because you can get the, the, the dough out of the cloth after. If you throw a cloth into the wash with this dough on it, it'll like bake like glue onto the cloth. We wanna make sure that there's no flour on the edge, or rather no dough on the edge of our cast iron because that'll harden and get all gross. So we're gonna give the edge a little bit of a wipe and we'll cover it and then we'll leave it out on the counter and we'll check it we'll check back on it in about half an hour and see how it looks after about 30 minutes we'll check on our dough and it's really rough and shaggy looking it's also very slack when we pick it up i've got wet hands makes it easier to handle this when we pick it up it's really like slack it's not uh it doesn't have a lot of elastic strength yet we're going to build some elastic strength by stretching it and folding it and this will really help us shape it into into loaves into bowls of flour later, of rather of dough later. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking it, hanging it, I'm shaking it so that it actually stretches. Flip it over, do the same on the other side. Lay one edge down, fold it over. And then I kind of push it. And that's already starting to get a lot stronger than it was. You can see I can now pick this up and it's not nearly as stretchy, or <laughs> it's not, it's a lot stronger. It's holding together a lot better than 
it was even just seconds ago. So by shaping it, by stretching and folding it like this, we're making the gluten a lot. We're developing sort of the gluten in it, the strength of the gluten. And down the road, when we go to shape this, our lives are going to be a lot easier. Give the lid, give the rim a little wipe with my wet hands. Cover it up. been about an hour. I'm going to open this up, have a look after the first set of stretch and folds. Let's see how strong it's, it's looking. Still pretty slack, so I'm going to give it another set of stretch and folds and then that'll probably be good. You can see that the surface is starting to get a lot smoother. Still keeping my hands wet so it's easier to work with it. And it's really holding together now. You can uh, see that I can really stretch it and it's it's a lot stronger now so that's gonna be nice to work with later so I'll just give it those two or three folds and tuck it all under so that that surface will proof and be on top or rather when this proofs that solid surface will be on top and the seams will be underneath that'll make things a little easier when we're shaping later so I'll rinse my hands, cover this up, and then we'll leave it for, uh, well, in hot weather, four hours, and in cold weather, 24 hours. So we'll just have to keep checking it, and we'll see that it's risen. And then the next step will be to divide and shape this, but if you're doing just one loaf, um, you won't have to divide it, you'll just shape it. So we'll be doing that next. This is just gonna sit on the counter and proof.